Hello guys, my name is Joel Mukanya. I'm a CEO and founder at JT Devs. For today's video, we're going to start up with a new module on MySQL. So I'm going to show you how to install MySQL on Linux as well on Windows. So on Linux, you only need some commands first. The first approach will be to update and upgrade your repository. Then after that, you can use the command to install MySQL. So that will be sudo apt install mysql dash our server. So that will allow you to install mysql on your uh, Linux operating system. Then you press yes, and then later on, you just have to verify if uh, you have it on your system. Then to verify if you have mysql on your system, all you need to do is to type mysql space dash dash version. Then later on, uh, you need to actually set up uh, a password uh, for your root password by using sudo mysql underscore secure underscore installation. All right. And then on Windows, uh, you need to download it and install it. I'm going to copy this link and paste it on the description so that you can follow up step by step on to install how to install uh, MySQL on your operating system all right so i've already done on my side i'm using MySQL. so our first attempt is to check um the database we have it um that comes along with MySQL server so to display all database uh i prefer to make use of uh, uppercase uh, especially on the MySQL or uh, MySQL commands, like select, uh, show, and create those kind of commands. So I'll specify show to display the list of database that is actually available on my system. So show that. Yeah. So it doesn't matter if you're using lowercase or uppercase, all right? So, but for me, I prefer all the keywords to make use of it, to make use of uppercase. All right, so those are the database that we have it, we have on our system, all right? Okay, so let me create a database. So we we'll say create the uh, database and the database name comes after the keyword database. So I'll be maybe uh, GT So there should not be any spaces. Okay, let's verify if uh, we do have it on our system. All right, here we go. Okay, so since we create a database, so we need to point to the database that we just created. So, because if we start creating or creating a table, we was pointing to that particular database then uh, so the system will not know to where it has to place your table. Maybe it might uh, place it on the system because that might be a default uh, database where it went in. Well, yeah. So I have to specify uh, use JT devs. And then another thing, just for best practice, uh, I would suggest you after uh, um, after your database name, just specify DB. So let's on you know that so, oh, this is the database that uh, I have. Okay, so it will make more sense to have um, a DB uh, right there at the end of your database name. Okay. So once we point to 
In particular database, we just now we need to create a table. To create a table, all we need to do is to make use of the command create. So it's going to be the same thing. Every, every time we want to create any database object, we must make use of a create statement. So we say create, and then we need to specify what we want to create. We want to create a table. Then after uh, specifying the table keyword, then we need to specify the table name. So I will go with students. Then we specify the parenthesis, the opening parenthesis. And then within our table, we need to start specifying the, the field name. So the field name will be like a variable. Oh, yeah. So later on, we can actually uh, point to that variable to retrieve the value that will store on that particular column. So with the database, uh, the field refers to a column. Okay, so we need to specify the column name. I will start with a first name. I'll go with first name. Then we need to specify. Oh, no because every table must have a primary key. So I will go with, uh, it will be number, so I will go with ID. So specify ID of type of int. Then we need to specify uh, uh, the primary key. Then I'll say primary key. So primary key we actually going to allow us to uniquely identify a particular row because each row will have a number like uh, on this particular because ID we specify it as uh, integer. So it's going to allow us to retrieve, uh, later on to retrieve um, a particular record. So if we say select blah, 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 way or from, and the way, the, on the way, we need to specify a condition. So that condition might be um, ID equals to one to retrieve uh, the first one or the first record. All right, so the next step will be to uh, create uh, the second column, yeah? Then that will be first name. So it will be virtual. Uh, now, virtual is a data type. The uh, same thing applies with the integer. Those are our data type. It will actually say what would be the nature of the value that we're going to store on that particular column. So, and then the parenthesis, the, those, the value that goes between the parenthesis, that will be the size of the value. I use or oh, how many characters uh, are you going to store on that particular column? So for the first name, I will specify 50 characters. Then after that, we have last name. Okay, I think that will be enough. And then we need, uh, you need to remember to close the parenthesis. So we have a opening parenthesis and then we also have a closing parenthesis. Then once we're done, we specify a semicolon to tell MySQL that we actually end our, uh, our query. So a query is going to be like, um, uh, a question or a statement that you actually send into the uh, to your database server. Then we press enter. And there we see that it's it's really uh, the query is called okay. And then now what we need to do we need to insert our data into our uh, into our table. So the insert statement we allow us to 
or add value to our uh, to our table. So insert mean add. So we want to add value into our table. So we say insert uh, insert into the table name. So that will be uh, students. All right. Then if you want, you can actually specify the feed, but uh, that will be for another day, but I'm going to skip that. Uh, and then I'm going to specify another keyword, values. So it's always going to be values after your table name. So not value, but values, all right? Because we might uh, provide uh, multiple values at the same time. I mean, uh, we give the value for a particular row and then we can actually add another, the next row at the same time. That's why it was named values, okay? Because also within a particular record or a particular row, we have multiple uh, columns, yeah? So those multiple columns has must have multiple values. Yeah, each column must we must provide a value. Yeah, that's why we also have the statement. That's why it's referred as value. I hope it's clear. So let's specify since it's uh, the first row, the first column is the ID. We need to make sure that it it must be a number or a numeric value. So we're going to start with one. And then after that, we need first name. And then since it's a voucher, it's a character, then we need to specify, uh, we need to specify our value within the single quotation. Yeah. Uh, believe, uh, oh, yeah, it'll be within a single quotation. Because character, if it's a character, we uh, can, let's say, for instance, we specify only uh, one character, then you need to pass only uh, the length of one character. So, so for the name, I'll go with my name. And then, what have I done? Okay. I say insert into student table. There we have values. Uh, one. Okay. Then if we want to add another row, then we specify a comma. Then we have another parenthesis. Then we can add with this will be two. Uh, say like picture. And then we use the semicolon at the end and then press enter. And then as you can see, uh, we insert two record. And then there is no duplicate or warning. Now after we insert data into a table, now we need to select the values. Because select we allow us to view the value that we added into a table. So we're going to say select, uh, you can, so the basic one will be select all, or we'll select all columns. I don't like this query, but I'm just going to show you. This is just for testing. Uh, you should not use it on the production. So you don't have to, you don't have to have this query on your, on your on your query whereby your web or your application you're going to host it online because this is actually is actually bad for your performance.
because uh, it has to select all the colors. Just imagine you have a lot of information in the maybe thousand or million of records. Then it has to uh, lock that particular table. And then if someone wants to uh, add the information into that particular table, that won't be able to insert or add data into it. Okay, so you need to avoid using the star. Star mean uh, all, meaning we need to select all columns. So this is just for testing purpose. And then we say from uh, the source, uh, which table are we reading the data from? Then it's going to be from students table. And then that will be it, and I'll press enter. And then here we are. So let's say, for instance, if uh, we want to see all the picture information, then we will go with uh, select. Uh, so this time I'm going to select uh, the ID. And then first name from, from student. Um, then we we ID it costs you two because Peter ID is two. Okay, we say select ID, comma first name. Then that means that select only those are uh, columns that we mentioned. Then from is actually uh, the source. So the source, which table are we reading? We're going to read data from. We're going to read data from our uh, student table. Okay. And then when we specify, um, we specify we want only to retrieve all the picture information, then we need to make use of the where condition. So the where condition we will say where ID equals to two. Okay. That will be it, and then we press enter. Okay, it's only going to retrieve uh, the ID and the first name. Okay, that's it for today. See you guys next time. Bye.